Hey, salutations, it's Davy D-A-V-Y. Power is knowledge, they are saying. Then it's your time to get more powerful and impress anyone. Yes, it's your week of fact and it starts now. Today is the 4th of March, also known as Do Something Day. And you exactly know what you should do. Oh, don't start looking somewhere else for other videos. Hit that subscribe button. And for everyone who's watching, on my previous video, I got more or less 50 views. So we are like a close circle, a small community. Just come closer. Come to see me. Share the goddamn videos now. Okay, to speak about today's topic, let's first travel to Hawaii. Oh, I forgot my green screen. Okay, so like I said, let's go to Hawaii just to set up the atmosphere, okay? You see how I dance? Well, I'm not a professional, but you know how it's called. Pfft, that wasn't a question. It's called the hula dance. And that's what inspired the name for the world famous toy, the hula hoop. All that for that? Oh my God. Blondie, I know you liked it. Yes, it's true. And it's in 1958 that the founders of Wham O hold the trademark name for the hula hoop. Oh uh, no, if it's to speak about hula hoop, I'm going to watch something else. Wait! What? Okay, I get it, hula hoop isn't interesting for you, but imagine you were on a date. But I'm not on a... Hey, hey. And imagine she's telling you that. You know, since I'm little, I'm a huge fan of the hula hoop. <laughs> Okay, you're right, I keep watching, but hurry up, drop the fact, what should I tell her? Okay then, listen. Arthur and Richard were inspired to make the hula hoop after they saw Australian children twirling a wooden hoop around their waist during gym class. It's in 1958 that Wamo first marketed a plastic version and it's estimated that 25 million hula hoops were sold the first four months. That's a clear stamp of success. And it's today, the 5th March 1963, that the hula hoop was patented by Arthur. So, are you impressed? Impressed? You know, I've just told you I'm a huge fan of the hula hoop. So I'm not impressed, as I knew it all already. You think I'm stupid? This is why you dating me? You date me because you think I'm stupid? You... Freeze! Oh, thank you. But anyways, you tricked me, man. It didn't work. I'm going to watch something else. Wait, see what I've done. Perhaps the next fact will impress her. Today it's food frozen day. Oh my god, you are so lame. Oh come on, I'm sure you liked it. Yes, it's true, I did. It's Clarence's first eyes who brought us what's called flash freezing. It's during an expedition he saw the Inuit doing ice fish and the fishes they caught froze almost instantly under the thick ice in minus 40 conditions. And when thawed, those same fish, even months later, tested fresh. He realized the key was freezing the food quickly to preserve flavor and quality. It's in 1930 that they began sales experiments in 18 retail stores around Springfield. No! So enjoy your frozen guys. Oh. Hello. Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you. Sorry? That was the word from Alexander to his assistant, Mr. Watson. And who cares? Who cares, Blondie? That was the first phone call ever made, the 10th of March, 1876. Watson was in an adjoining room and he heard the words clearly. Okay, David, it's really nice. We learn things and all, but hello, we are the 7th today. Yes, yeah, sure, but it's because it's today, the 7th of March, 1876, that Alexander received the first patent for the telephone. You know, an interesting fact about Alex is that he was a teacher for the deaf and he even married one of his students. So he invented a device to communicate at a distance, but he wouldn't be able to use it with his wife. And what is so funny about it? No, but because she's deaf, so he should have invented FaceTime or something. <laughs> okay, I'm going to help. Today is the day where this and that were going to be replaced. On the 8th of March 1979, Philips publicly demonstrated at a press conference called Philips Introduced Compact Disc. American inventor James has been credited inventing the first system. He was granted a patent in 1970. But I'm sure you have more dates to give, don't you? Yes, in 1979, Sony and Philips set up together to design a new digital audio disc. And after the release in 1982, compact discs and the players were extremely popular. 400,000 players were sold from 83 to 84. But now, being in 2019, we can definitely say that compact discs and drawing 
the retro group. The retro, the retro group. group. Because nowadays, mobile phone and speakers with Bluetooth. And today's topic is... What today's topic? Barbie? Oh, sorry guys, no, I'm not going to do Barbie. Blondie? Oh, what? Yeah, just come and do it for me. I'm not going to do Barbie, come on. Oh my gosh, you're so lazy now. What's the topic? Barbie? Huh. You think I was playing with Barbie when I was little? You can dream about it. Jessica, it's your time to shine, babe. Guys, come on. Barbie? Come on, guys, how many are we here? No one really wants to speak about Barbie. Uh, actually, guys, I don't mind. I used to play Barbie when I was little. <gasps> okay, then, go ahead. Oh, that's great. I always dream doing that. So the Barbie doll... But look at the camera, though. Oh, okay. So the Barbie doll... No, guys, don't show my girlfriend. Yes, this one was unveiled... Where is your date thing? Oh. Today, in 1959, the first Barbie was wearing a black and white suit and was costing only $3. A funny fact is that Barbie was named after her creator's daughter, Barbara. And when Ken was introduced in 1961, he was also named after, not after her daughter, obviously, but after her son, Kenneth. I'm sorry, guys. Let's just move on. And that brings us to Sunday, the time for me to say thank you to Eric Neal and Milex for the subscribe. That's the key, guys. If you really want to experience the power of knowledge, hit that subscribe button. See you next week. Ciao.